Okay, so seek and you shall find, or shall you? Well, let's talk about where the vulnerability was. And I think I'll kill two birds with one stone here by briefly walking you through the proof of concept that Ian Beer posted in his initial write-up. So the first thing we have is that the proof of concept would call mock reply port to get a destination port. Now, I don't think there's any special reason to use this special reply port. You just needed a destination port, and it was easier than calling mock port allocate, which would have a whole bunch of extra setup. So we just needed a destination to cause a linkage to from a special reply port. All right, then we have thread get special reply port. So that is the intentional special reply port, which we want to cause a linkage between the sync inheritor port and the destination. So to cause that linkage, you have to send a message to the destination. Inside the mock message header, you're going to set the remote port as the destination. You're going to set the local report or the reply port as the special reply port that has been gotten here. And in so doing, once you get into the kernel side of the code, then with, you know, one of those hinted functions, deep down in the control flow path for a mock message, you will eventually make your way to IPC port link special reply port. And this is the function which will do the linkage between the special reply port and the destination port. All right, so this sync inheritor port gets set as a link or a pointer to the destination port. All right, but then comes along this weird function host request notification. And host request notification will allow an attacker to basically just clobber this and completely change out what that field points at. So now all of a sudden, he has changed the IO bits field so that now it has a notional kernel object type of IO kernel object type host notify, which will point at a host notify type structure that you can see get allocated inside of this function. And so this has overwritten what was a link to the destination port with a link or a pointer to a host notification. Now I've marked these as sassy here, only in the sense that, you know, the attacker doesn't control, you know, the pointer address or anything like that. They're sassy just in the sense that a attacker caused them to be influenced, right? They specifically chose the when and the where of how those got set, and that is going to be to their advantage. So subsequently then, the attacker calls mock message receive, and that receive through, you know, deep control flow path will eventually make its way to IPC port adjust special reply port locked. Sorry, rather I'm receiving a message on the special reply port and then it will need to do some modification. And so specifically what it's going to do is deep down inside of it, it's going to say, okay, if my IP sync link state is has a value of port sync link port, which was set back in this function, then I'm going to take this field, the special reply port, IP sync inheritor port, which is this K data field. It's going to think that that K data field still points at a IP sync inheritor port or this K data sync inheritor port field. And it is subsequently going to be confused, right? And so this is fundamentally the nature of type confusion. We have multiple interpretations for a thing. In this case, this K data field being inside of a union where the IO bits control the interpretation of it. And therefore we said that if the attacker can change the pointer or change the IO bits, then this can lead to type confusion. Okay, so what was the fix for this? Well, the fix was to lock down this host request notification by adding in a check to say, you know what, if someone is calling this on a special reply port, I am just going to error out. I'm not going to allow it to continue and cause the confusion that occurs when you jam that entry into the K object field, thus overriding the special reply ports linkage. All right, so that's good. That is a fix for this particular vulnerability. And I would also just point out that, you know, from this reference for, based on the actual binary diffing, it doesn't look like this IP is KO labeled port sanity check was in the initial fix. Uh, this is probably just here because uh, Apple doesn't release every single, you know, backported version of the XNU kernel. They just released whatever is the top of tree. So I'm diffing things that are not necessarily representative of the exact version that got the fix. But there's one other meta commentary that I have to make here about host request notification. And that is that this function overall, and just seeing how it was used here by an attacker, this makes my sploity sense tingle. 
like just from a design perspective. Yes, they added a sanity check here, but the reason that sanity check was needed was because they introduced a new port type, right? And so this function is just going to be sitting around in the code waiting to burn them again in the future when they add a new port type. And so unless the kernel developers have, you know, always complete awareness of every single function in all of the kernel, not just this function, but there's probably other functions like this that can, you know, cause some unexpected changes of kernel objects and things like that. Unless the developers have complete awareness and they know that there's been this problem in the past and they know that every single time you add a new port to mock, you must come in here and add an extra sanity check. You know, that feels very unlikely, and therefore, in the future, eventually, this is going to lead to type confusion again. It's going to, you know, it's just a function that does something that seems really dangerous. It just automatically jams an overwrite on top of this uh, union field that, you know, can have many different interpretations in many different places. So, anyways, that's just meta-commentary here that although this was fixed in and of itself, this seems like a dangerous function. All right, there's one other interesting comment in the initial write-up of the vulnerability. Uh, Ian Beer said, It is my assessment that this vulnerability is unexploitable on devices with PAC, that is, pointer authentication codes for iOS 14, where the host notify ports, IPK object pointer is now tagged. So Apple released new hardware. It had support for this thing called pointer authentication codes. That is a control flow integrity verification mechanism. So even though he said tagged here, I want to make it clear that, you know, in this class we talk about tagged memory as an exploit mitigation. This is not what PAC is. It just happens to, you know, share some similarities in the sense that it, you know, steals high order bits from pointers. Anyways, the, you know, the actual port definition that was shown, again, you know, the, the mock uh, kernel source code that's released is not always exactly the right versions for the right, uh, for the versions where the vulnerabilities occurred. So if you look at the actual definition that would be in use when this vulnerability was found, the K object field inside of the K data has now been tagged with this XNU pointer auth signed pointer. And so basically they're doing this controlled flow verification so that, you know, an attacker can't just like change out this K object with, uh, you know, some other different type of thing uh, and expect it to, you know, be interpreted correctly. So, you know, this, I think, is a good thing. This basically shows that the new Apple socks that have this support are starting to actually have some effect and, you know, kill types of vulnerabilities. So, chalk one up for the Tyco killers.